In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create an app that will interact with a web service API. In this example, we're going to be using the Bookshop API version 1.1, the documentation to which you can find below. We're going to start a new project, and we're going to base this on the single view application. I'm going to call this one Add Book. and I'll save it on the desktop. So my first job is to add some controls to the storyboard. I'm going to add a label, I'm going to use Auto Layout, I'm going to add a text field underneath it. And finally, I'm going to add a button underneath that. like so. I'm going to adjust the auto layout by double tapping. Centre the text and finish off these auto layouts. And that's my layout finished. I'm going to now go to my header file and I'm going to implement NSURL connection delegate, like so. My next step is to try out a simple API request. So I need to create a private NS data property to store the data I'm receiving. And I need to synthesize. Now on view did load, I need to make sure, well first of all I need to connect my storyboard to my header file. So I control drag from the label, call it book title, which is what it's going to be. Control drag from the text field, which is going to be ISBN number, and create an action for the button, which will be add book, UI button, and connect. So I can return to my implementation file. I need to make sure that the keyboard displays the numerical keys and also is a dark colour so it stands out. So I'm going to go for keyboard type equals UI 
keyboard type number pad and I'm going to change it to be, be a bit darker keyboard appearance equals UI keyboard appearance dark like so so now I'm going to add some code to this add book method to allow me to connect to the API so I first will get my um, NS string which is going to contain the URL to my uh, web service You can copy and paste this. And I need to insert the ISPN number, so I'm going to um, choose a book to add. Just found this on uh, on Amazon. There's my URI. Then I create a an NSURL object. URL with string, and I pass the URL into there. So that's my NSURL object. Then I create an NS mutable URL request. And NS mutable URL request. Request with URL. NS and then I'm going to change the method HTTP method equals put because I've checked my API for my bookshop Add value and my token will go in there for heading should be header field authorization and I need to generate this now so it's going to be jdo colon p455w0rd <coughs> that looks about right so I'll copy that and I'll put that in there so that's my authorization header added now I need to specify the genre in the request body and a string body and I'll hard code it genre equals 7 which is uh, computers and internet so I'm going to create, turn it into an NS data object data using encoding um, NS UTFH string encoding that will do so I've now got my data in an NS data object 
and now I'm going to set that as my body. Data with a capital D. So my request dot HTTP body equals body data. There we are. So I've now set a I've set the method to put. I've assigned a value to the header field and I've also assigned the values to the body of the request. So now I create an NSURL connection and it's NSURL connection alloc init with request. Request is request delegate is self because the messages will come back to this class then and because I've implemented the de correct delegate and having launched it I assign it to nil because I've finished using it and I need to create the three special delegate methods so this should be straightforward void Here we are, connection did receive response. Give us a response N S U R L response That's my first method. And my second method is quite similar to this. Connection. did receive data. So the first one will fire when the response first comes back, the second one will fire when the data is received, and the third one will fire once the data has been downloaded completely. So those are my three methods. So I'm going to put a log file on each one. See what's going on. Log message in each one. See what's going on. Receive response. Receive data and finish loading. So 
I hit the button and we look at log file, log messages you can see receive response fired receive data fired and finish loading then fired I can now add my code to this to display the data that's been received so now I'm going to init myself.data and this mutable data and what this will do it will delete any previous data held so if I pull this again it won't keep adding to the same the same data object so I've allocated the self.data 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 append data okay let's change that to ns mutable data and that goes away and then once it's finished loading we need to do something with it so we're going to create an ns error object to cope with any errors that we get we're going to create an ns dictionary object which will contain my JSON data NS JSON serialization JSON object with data options and error object with data is self dot data options is k nil options and error is the address of my error object so now I should be able to log the contents of my dictionary and let's test it button and there's my data and it says the book already exists code 37 error status failure great so at least we know it's working my final job for this part is to add the network indicator so while it's working it's going to show that there's some network activity taking place so I need to launch the network activity as soon as I have launched the request application shared application network activity indicator visible equals yes and as soon as I've received the data the data is finished downloading I'm going to switch it off again so I'll test this a final time and we should see the activity indicator start spinning there it is and it's very quick. Next we're going to look at how we handle errors. Now if we look at the response we get back you'll see that the error has a dictionary which contains a code and text and a string value which indicates success or failure. So the first thing we're going to do is identify whether we've had success or failure and as you can see we've got this status key which, which stores a string which indicates success or failure so ns string status equals json object for key status what ns log that to make sure we're getting the right value and we'll run it again st 
status failure. So now we can have an if statement to see if it's been successful or not. So if it's equal to string failure, as we can see in the bottom, we need to do something. Else, we need to do something different. So if it fails, we've got this error dictionary we need to extract to find out what the, what the issue was. And this dictionary So we'll log that again to make sure we've got the right value. And there we are. Code 37 textbook already exists. So if we've got an error, we need to pop a message on the screen to alerting the user. We'll have a UI alert view. We'll end it with title, message, delegate, and cancel button. Not too subtle. Message will be error object for key. Let's have a look, it's text. Delegate is nil, we don't want to any response from it. And cancel button title is going to be OK. Other button titles, nil. And that should pop the alert box up. So alert show. So I click on the button, there we are, error, book already exists, perfect, works a treat. We now need to add some code to run if there's no errors. So we're going to modify this NS string, string, string with format, there's my format. And I'm going to replace that with self dot ISPN number dot text. That's it. So I'm now retrieving the ISPN number from the from the text box, which is going to help. String with format ISPN, that looks good. So we'll run this again. And we'll add A new book. Right, so as you can see, nothing happened because we haven't had to put the else statement in. So let's scroll up a tiny bit and let's see what's been pulled out. There we are. <clears throat> so I have a dictionary called book. So I'm going to pull off the book title. So else. NS dictionary book equals JSON object for key book and we'll log that to see what's there. So we'll run it again, we need to find another book, there we are, and let's have a look at the uh, the code, here we are, 
So I've got the title, author, ISBN pages, and so on. So we know that we know, we know that we've got access to the book data. So now I can say self dot book title dot text equals book object for key title and then I can get rid of self dot data which contains all my all my uh, data and that's done. So now I can add any book to my app. And there we are, you see the titles now displayed at the top of the page. And that's now added to my API. The final step is to add some authentication to this. At the moment, as you've noticed, you can see that my authorization is hard coded into the app and that's obviously a really bad idea. So my final task is to implement the correct authentication. So the first thing I need to do is implement the alert view delegate. Because we need that to capture the information from the login form. And I could do with it in this user default. So let's have a look at this. Assign property. And I'll synthesize that. Okay, and in view did load, I need to make sure I initialize my uh, my user defaults. And that's initialized my standard user defaults. Now let's have a look at my ad book. That's fine, initials, fine, research, right. So this is where I need to do something about my login details. As you can see the next line down, I, rec I need my token. And a string token equals self dot user defaults object for key. And I'm going to have a key called token like so. So next thing I need to do is see if it's nil. So if token is not equal to nil, in other words, there's a value there, I can do what I need to do. I need to use that value in here. So request blah, blah, blah. So all that takes place if I have a token. But instead of the add value for authorization, I now have a token, which I can now use. However, if we don't have a token, we need to ask the user for their username and password. So I'm going to have an alert view. Call it login. My alert view alloc in it with title message blah blah blah. Title is going to be login. Message will be please enter your username and password. Delegate will be self because we need to have a response from this. Cancel button title is going to be OK and no other buttons. 
I now need to set the type, the style. So I need to say login dot alert view style equals UI alert view style login and password input. And I need to then show it. So once I've done that, I now need to implement my delegate method so I can see what's been typed in. So I'll put it down here. Avoid alert view, alert view, click button at index. That's the one. So I need to retrieve the username and password. That's equal to alert view text field at index zero. one for the password and I need to get the text out of there because that's the text field so I'll change that and I've now got my username and password so I need to concatenate these together to base64 the result string with format it's going to be username colon password and I'll log that. So now if I try and run this And I get a login box. So using my default, click on OK, and you can see in the log I've got my values concatenated together. So I now need to base 64 this and then save it somewhere. So I turn it into an NS data. Data using encoding NSUTF H string encoding, which is base 64. And now I turn it into a string. Oops. Text data base sixty four encoded data with options N S data and see we've encoding lend line with line feed, that's the one. So I'll log this, whoops. Encode string with options. That's more like it. So I'll log this one. To make sure I'm getting the right value. And 
let's see what happens. And there's my basics for encoded string. And by comparing that to the value stored in my database or the value generated when I look at the basics for encoder, you should see that those are the same. So I know I can now store that token in my NS user defaults. Self so user defaults set object base 64 string for key token so now if i try and add a new book i now get my username and password And the book now gets added. There is one small problem with this. If I put the wrong username and password in, it will generate the token, but the token will not be valid. So I need to make one last change to my code. And that is, if it's equal to failure, I obviously alert as usual. But then, if the failure is due to an invalid token, I need to delete the token. So remember the error, we had this code, and if I look at my documentation, code 48 tells me it's an invalid token. So I say ns number code equals error object for key code. And I can say if code integer value is equal to 48, I need to clear the token. And that is my entire application now written and finished. And you should be able to use a lot of this information both for your lab for this session, but also it'll help you to test and debug your own API. If you're going to make any changes to your API, you must ensure you make a completely fresh copy of it, call it version 1.1, so you don't change the original version which is going to be marked.